All right, this is either going to be awesome or a complete disaster. So <laughs> there we go. So tonight we are going to be running Winter's Daughter in the Dolmenwood setting. And this has been around for a few years. Pretty popular um, little adventure here. But um, Drew, why don't you, while I'm getting, uh, getting on the right page here, why don't you give us a little character introduction for who you're going to be playing tonight <laughs> okay so before we started this we wanted to roll up a character uh just to keep things going as as quickly as possible um i am asriel the fair uh, i will be playing a knight character and uh my character is uh he's he's very much in honor over everything you know if he would rather die than dishonor himself I would say he's he's a very proper, you know, kind of fella, and uh, it's going to be interesting sending him into the unknown by himself. Uh, this will be a solo journey, and I think I think Ezreal's up to it. You know, I think he's up to it. I'm I'm hopeful. I'm positive that he'll make it. Azrael. It's gonna happen. <laughs> yeah. I gotta write his name down. All right. Uh, something that we should mention is we're going to I'm going to attempt to run this in old school essentials. It has been a bit since I've ran this system, so if it gets funky for all you OSE purists out there, you know, have mercy on me. And I have no idea what I'm doing, so this should be fun. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna try to stay like I've got my little cheat sheet over here. We're gonna try to stay true to the rules and and be very like systematic about this, but we're bound to get off the rails. So. Um, I'm okay with that. Bear with me. Okay. I'll bear with you. Okay, okay so <laughs> I, I want to give you a little bit of background here and the, the, the viewers okay. at home a little bit of background. So some common folklore in you know this Dolmenwood setting, some things that you would know. There once was a cold prince, it's the fairy lord who ruled all of Dolmenwood before the arrival of mortals. Eternal winter. Under his rule, the forest lay under an eternal cloak of frost and snow. The war. 900 years ago, mortals waged war against the fey armies of the Cold Prince vying for control of Dolmenwood. Sir Chide, in the, mi Sir Chide, in the midst of the war, the fabled hero fell in love with a woman called the Lady of the Wood. The Lady of the Wood, a sorceress maiden of mysterious origin. First meeting, they met in the deeps of Dolmenwood. The betrothal, the two pledged their hearts to one another, exchanging rings of engagement. The Cold Prince is defeated. The mortal armies were victorious, and the Cold Prince was exiled into his dominion in fairy. But there is an ever-looming threat. Every year in the winter, the magic that banishes the Cold Prince weakens, and frigid winds whisper of his desire to reclaim his kingdom in the mortal world. You also know okay. that the knight who is Sir Chide, or was Sir Chide rather, uh, was slain in the final battle of the mortal and fairy battle um, on the hills of the high world. Hills of the high world. So he's dead. He's Sir dead. Chide is dead. He's dead. He's been dead okay. for 900 years. But they sing songs of him in taverns and celebrate his victory okay. over fairy, throwing the cold prince back into his uh, fey world of fairy. Okay. Okay. So one night, our knight Asriel. What's Asriel's last name? Fair. He's just a handsome guy. Okay. He's just very Asriel the very fair. posh. You know. Yeah. Asriel is asleep in his, let's call it castle, his keep, if you will. Okay. And he has this dream of this beautiful woman. And it's, it's a reoccurring dream. He's had it for weeks. In his dreams, he falls in love with this lady who keeps visiting him and awakes with a deep yearning to be with her. After he okay. keeps having this reoccurring dream, he has a second dream. Uh, it's of him venturing into a burial mound, opening a coffer, taking a ring from the finger of a skeleton, and bringing the ring to the lady. Oh. At, at the end of this dream, the lady tells him that the tomb is a real place, and that a magical door 
to her realm is located there, in the lower level. She promises her heart to the PC. Rather, Asriel. <laughs> if. Sure, sure. If he can bring her this ring. Okay, so if I've got this right. Yeah, so if I've got this right. Um, some dude's dead, uh, which is great. He, he was well respected. And then I've been having some weird dreams. Uh, but they're good, you know, like the kind of dreams that you kind of want to have as a as a bachelor in a kingdom, right? So I'm having these dreams about this lady, and she's willing me, you know, hey, you should you should uh, if you want to be together, we we're gonna have to go on. You got to go on a journey, right? And that's fine. I'm I'm cool with that. I've been around, I've done battles and wars other places. So that sounds great. And then I gotta get a ring, uh, so I can put a ring on it. And then the two of us spend eternity together. Something like that. Sounds good. Um, My question is yeah. this, though, just for the folks at home: uh, Why is Sir Chide not married, or why doesn't he have a? Why doesn't he currently a wife? I'm going to assume he doesn't have a wife if he's running off to chase. Uh, Was Sir Chide or Asriel? I am Asriel. You just said Sir Chide. I apologize, uh, Asriel. Asriel resembles Sir Chide because he is so fair and. And um, and nightly, yeah. so it uh, very much makes sense that I would I would fill this role, and I I will say this, um, you know, Azrael is just he's just this guy, you know, he's just uh, you can't tie him down, you know, he's got goals, and uh, he's one of those people that just understands his worth, and he's gonna have to, it's gonna it's gonna take a while, you know, he's he's single by choice. I know that the the king and the kingdom is pressuring him, but he's got brothers, so it's okay. You know, he's just like, no, I want the right one. I want to find the right person that's going to complete me, make me the total package, and then that way we can rule over some realm uh, the best possible way that we can. Just, you know, I'm for the people. I'll say that. I'm for the people. I like it. I like it. You, so you make your way totally alone. And you have you you have everything that you could possibly need for an adventure. Uh, you have yep. your weapons, you have your provisions, you have torches. You're prepared to to go on this adventure. And for whatever reason, you go alone. Love it. Um, you you walk down the path. I sneak out because I, I the, people are people are telling me not to go, so I kind of sneak out. You know what I mean? I feel like that's that's a vibe. That's fair. That's fair. You uh, you follow the path that this fair maiden in your dreams has told you to go on, and you you find yourself in a tangled forest, twisted trees. They seem too close in around. Um, they seem rather they seem to close in around you, as you walk down the path, almost blocking your exit behind you. You continue to move forward because okay. you're like, well, I've gotten this far, and there doesn't seem to be an exit, so I'm going to move forward here up ahead and you see a flat topped which being i'm gonna zoom out here uh how a hillock <laughs> hillock thank you okay all right yeah all right sounds better my bad um do you see do you see um i'm trying to point her yeah do you see this here i do okay. um it's very stony looking yeah yeah all, very uh what eight bit yeah, eight bit kind of cobblestony, um, very much of a place that would surround a dungeon in a Zelda game. That's that's what I'm gonna go for hmm. on this one. Weird. We, that's a strange, uh, strange connection to make. You see Azriel down here, and you can kind of see this uh, this berry, uh, this this mound up ahead, um, and you start to, as you continue to walk, you see these these stones a stone circle up ahead yeah and i believe you should be able to move your token oh right um hang on a sec ah there we go um okay i'm i'm going to approach the nearest obelisk um and i'm going to look for uh, any writing any any writing discernible marks that i may be able to uh, decipher or understand you notice that there are some runes etched onto these uh, these stones. I mean, do I hmm, do I know how to read runes? I don't think so. I know how to speak common and woldish. They, you assume that they are. There's some kind of ritualistic magic involved here. I don't think you're able to to read. Okay. Uh, what's here? 
Um, but you do know. But I can identify that there's some juju. Yeah, that you're getting like a weird vibe here, and and more so. Okay. Um, you notice in the center here, in the center here. Yeah. There is uh, there's a dead, a lot of blood spilled all around it. Um, it's kind of like more of an altar. It's not well depicted here, but it's more of like an altar. Okay. All right. Um. Well, if that doesn't say nope, then uh, I don't know what does. Uh, I'm gonna keep my distance from the um, from the the circle of stuff, and I'm going to I'm gonna position myself. So I'm gonna move a little bit, kind of a little bit inward, like maybe like right next to this this lonely tree hanging out right over here. Um, again, trying try to keep my distance. Like I don't I, I'm feeling I'm feeling weird dead deer that's not I, i'm i'm a i'm a i'm a nobleman that's weird stuff to me i'm not curious i'm upset you also notice that there are uh there's all these owls kind of like on both sides of the trees here just kind of staring at you ominously okay all right um are they saying anything or are they just you know locked in spooky i not hooting there is a one in six chance um <laughs> You know what these mean. And okay. I, I dropped my first D6. Good thing I had extras. <laughs> wow. Uh, I, roll, I, I rolled a one. So, um, hang on a second here. At this moment in gameplay, it's brought to you by nothing. That's right. Brought to you by nothing. Enjoy nothing. Okay. <laughs> I apologize. Uh, it's all right. So, you you recognize these owls as symbols of the droon you you know that the droon are a cult of sorcerers who jealously guard the stone circles and lay lines of dolmen wood common folk are terrified of their occult machinations including kidnappings and rumors of human sacrifice and fear to speak their name they are not to be meddled with interesting well um I sort of now I feel like uh, a, a sense of a sense of duty. Um, I will say that I'm I'm at least I'm at least pleased that it's a deer and not a human. So I'll I'll take that into account as I um, as I inspect the area. Can I see any? I mean, you know, not to not to like hack it or whatever. But can I see a cave opening? Can I see an entrance? Am I looking for like, you know? You do. You see one. A door. Okay. You, you see a rather large stone. Uh, um, I'm going to approach the stone and I'm going to size it up. Um, I'm going to see if I can like, you know, I'm kind of, I'm kind of like pushing on it. I, you know, I'm trying to like see if there's any wiggle or budge. I want to, I want to see if I can like kind of muscle this, this thing around. I would ask you to give me a strength check. And how do I do that? <laughs> I don't know. In old school essentials, I forget. <laughs> so I'm just gonna say uh, I'm just gonna say um, you roll a d20. Um, okay. And I want it to be. I'm gonna give you like a a a, d a difficulty rating of twelve. Okay. Um, I rolled a five. And I'm going to say you do have a strength modifier, but I assume that's not going to get you to 12. No, plus one. So six. All right. The whole game's screwed. We're not actually playing old school essentials anymore. Uh, we're playing some sort of hodgepodge game that I'm going to create on the fly. Uh, not really. I mean, we're going to use some of it. Um, I'm definitely going to use like the combat sequences and whatnot, but I just I don't care to look sure. it up. So um, I'm going to say you failed your strength check. Does something terrible happen? I don't know. Yes. Oh, uh, they pull a hammy. Um, <laughs> the drone, uh, just then, I'm um, going to D4 drone cultists. Two, I rolled a two, come out and attack you. I'm trying to, I was trying to find, I'm just going to use the undead tokens here. Fine. But I, I would say, like, they're not just going to pop out of, like, literal nowhere. They just come um out of the woods here you see them ahead of time okay so do you see that i do um, um encounters um let me see if i'm gonna i'm just gonna skip surprise because i mean they see you for sure they're yeah their distance is already set because they're coming out of the woods um i'm gonna have you roll 
Okay, so each side, roll a d6. I rolled a three. So you have the initiative yeah, I, on them. So what do you want to do? Am I, uh, you know, I don't have any long range weapons. So from a movement perspective, can I just move to attack these, uh, move and attack in the same? Uh... Oh, yeah. Go ahead and you can. Um... Okay. Okay. And I would say, like, I, I don't right, know, gonna... what is that? 5, 10, 15, 20. Yeah, you're within range. Just Okay, so remind me, I'm going to attack uh, the roll... dude that is right in front of me. Yeah, roll a d20 and add your, um, add your strength modifier. Okay, I rolled an 11 plus 1, so 12. Bear with me. I don't know, understand why there's no... You rolled a 12? Yes. Perfect. 11 um, plus 1. Yep. That, that is going to hit our first uh, Drune cultist here. Okay, I'm going to roll a d6. Uh, and I got a 6 using Ooh. my lucky Gen Con dice. You... Well, okay, before before I say that, I will say the Gen Con dice has Gen Con on one side and then another name on the other side. I am assuming Gen Con being superior is 6. Yeah. That's how I'm basing it, if yeah, that's, that's all right. Yeah, when, okay. I roll, when I roll my lucky Gen Con dice, it is 6 is Gen Con. Um, so you did Perfect. 6. You What did you use? What weapon? A short sword. You reach back with your short sword. You come down hard, um, trying to end this as quickly as possible. You hit the first drone in the right shoulder. He gasps. Ah! Yeah. And he kind of like shrieks and uh, like cowers a bit, and it moves on to them. Uh, the first okay. cultists, I'm gonna say they they both have some sort of like short blade, like a like a knife or a dagger. Uh, yep. Just what did they? What is their? It might not even have like a hit modifier, but yeah, they have a plus one. All right. Uh, the first one comes back with his dagger, comes down on you with a 15. What is your armor class? My AC is 17 plus 1. Ooh! Armored. They both I've, miss. I've got plate mail. They both. Yeah. And they both uh, completely they completely whip. Crunkle. Yep. And it's back back around to you, Azrael. Okay, I'm gonna keep keep going after the same uh, the same dude. Oh, I rolled a 1. Ooh, that is going to be a... Dang it! Doesn't matter. A one, uh, you try to hit him with your sword. Yep. You come back down, uh, feeling really uh, kind of full of yourself about getting that first really kind of pretty good blow. <laughs> you come down, but you trip. And yep. You, you drop your sword, and it kind of flings on into the like edge of the wood here. And it slides far away. <laughs> yeah. Go so straight. now you're just weaponless. They uh, they come back to you, and the one hits. Okay. Uh, with uh, so the one comes down, <laughs> whiffs again, and hits you with two damage. He gets you, he stabs you um, in your right, in your right hand. He comes down. You must have like, kind of like as you're like fumbling, he he stabs you right in that hand. Of course, of course. Fantastic. Um, okay. Well, then with my left hand, I'm gonna reach uh, onto my belt. And I'm gonna grab my mace, and with that, man, these are hard to read. Um, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna re-roll on an easier to read die. Uh, I'm still attacking the same guy with a 15 uh, plus one, so 16. Yeah, that'll hit. Um, D6 for the mace, and it is a two. Oh, um, would you like to narrate how you kill the first rune? But of course, so uh, shaken and disturbed by the fresh wound on my my dominant hand that I use with my saber, uh, this weird, uh, almost primal urge comes over me. And that's when I, I grab the mace from my belt. I do a little flippity-doo in the air. Why? Because I'm feeling fancy. And then I just come down hard and crush the skull of the uh, of the of the man in front of me, uh, and as as I can feel it just cleaving head in twain, uh, all of the ooze trickles down the handle and slicks my hand with a fresh kill. 
Um, I'm going to. I'm. I was going to say I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. Uh, I wanted to find how to change the color, so I could scribble, scribble, scribble. But uh, at any rate, he is dead. Um, I am going to roll. Uh, I'm going to use an, an OSC mechanic here uh, called Morale, and I'm gonna okay. looking for their. Basically, have a morale score. Um, 2d6 higher than morale score uh, monster surrenders or flees the morale score yeah that does not seem right hang on um, standing by I'm so like I've been playing Mork Yorkborg for so long it's Morkboria these stats are like throwing me for a loop here apologies to those at home who are watching this on a Saturday dying inside as I look up these stats I'm gonna make a call and say that um, his morale is a like a six, straight down the middle. Okay. Morale, and that is a nine, higher than morale score. Score monster surrenders or flees. So that this other drone uh, immediately uh, runs. Do you pursue? Um, I I do, but in um in in search of information you know what i mean like uh i i kind of call out to him uh and and say you know like uh hold hold it there uh young beast and uh i essentially am like hey how do i do you know how to open a, this door you know why why not you know see if he's gonna tell me will he tell me yes no maybe i don't know uh he definitely would not tell you and he shrieks back at you, and he's he kind of like in a hiss, almost a whisper. He said, I'll tell you nothing. And he, does he get away before you hit him? Yes, no, maybe. Yes, he does. He gets away. All right. All right. Um, okay, so I still have a big stone in the way. Um, I, I'm going to kind of go back to investigate the, you know, kind of kind of like these little... Um, these little areas over here, you know, like, am I, am I seeing, I'm going to feel around and I'm going to try to sense if there's a trigger, uh, that can, that can, you know, loosen a pulley system or something. No, it seems like it's just a regular old stone. Uh, I will, because you are, your adrenaline's pumping, like from the heat of battle, I will give you uh, advantage on, Again, I don't even know if this is an OSC uh, mechanic, so for those of you watching, just throw all that out the window. I will give you advantage. Just roll two d20s and take the higher of the scores. Add your strength modifier and get over a 12 to roll this stone away like Jesus on the third day. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I got an 18. That's the higher of the two. Strength modifier, one, so 19. You roll the stone away and reveal and reveal a brand new set of <laughs> copper pans that's Woo! right today we're selling you on the big red copper pans no it, we are not it rolls away and you hear -do 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 -do. ah that's great i don't know where it came from but i there's something calling to me inside and uh i feel satisfied of course i enter you hear that sound you're gonna run away no, that sound says come hither, I enter. You find yourself yep. in a... Oh, okay. There I am. I would say you light a torch, right? There are stairs that descend 20 feet into the earth, caked with centuries of undisturbed dust. You feel it and hear a deathly silence. It's only disturbed by your footsteps. There's a dank smell, moist and moldy. Well, before I fully descend the stairs, I pop a Claritin and take a swig from my water skin because this is going to, uh, it's going to exacerbate my sensitive sinuses being the wealthy rich boy that I am. Uh, <laughs> okay, I'm going to head down the stairs and I'm going to enter the room proper. So, like, right there. Okay. Um, to give you kind of a feel for the atmosphere, you know, it's musty, dank, stifling air, it's wet, the ceiling and the walls. You notice in all four corners of this room, uh, standing on plinths, 
um, in the corners of the room. They are moldy. They are covered with mustard-colored fur. You do notice there are items on top of each one of these pillars, um, mm-hmm. all about one foot tall. And okay. you notice that the first one has a silver holy symbol, a wooden statue of a cherub, what appears to be some sort of book, rather large candle. Is the candle lit? Um, I don't know. Is it? Yes, no, maybe. No, it is not. By the um, way, I'm uh, right, well, rolling a yes, no, maybe dice every time I say that for the folks that are watching at home. For the zero people that are watching this on a Saturday. <laughs> yeah. Or that have made it this far into the video. If you made it this far into the video, please comment sandwich down below. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, all right. Well, I'm I'm going to... I'm going to inspect the, I'm going to inspect the book. Uh, is this, is this, can I like, okay, I'm going to check for traps, you know, like Indiana Jones style. Like I'm going to look around and see if I can figure out, like if I pick up this book, is a giant boulder going to come running after me? You know, um, you look for traps and you do not, you do not appear to find anything. Um, I will tell you Uh, that, uh, I just want to point out and I have to look for myself. Uh, yeah, I'm actually going to reveal a bit more here for you. Um, okay. Just because, why not? Oh uh, my. Okay, you didn't see that because, uh, that didn't do anything. <laughs> there you go. Do you see I, that? Hey, I do. Um, okay, kind of looks and, like a door and some, some brick. Yeah. Ah, okay, okay, so... You notice there is a door in front of you, and then there's a hallway on either side, and then, of course, the stairs that go right back up to where you were. Um, you've checked sure. for traps on on the book. Um, let's just call it a pillar, okay? Um, okay. And yeah. you don't seem to find anything. Uh, okay, I'm going to pick up the book and uh, inspect it, try to find out what it is, what's in it, and if I can read it. Okay. Um, as you... As you pick up the book, it immediately, along with the other three objects, shoot up into the air, and they immediately kind of like start circling and flying around and scolding you, saying things like, I cannot believe that you came down here. Why are you here? What do you think you're doing? Why would you touch me? And they just keep flying around and scolding you. Um, they speak They speak in okay. a shrill, and they are scolding you for all of your misdeeds, including entering the tomb. And they just never stop. Like, uh, okay. Why would you wait on here? Blah, 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 blah. Um. Okay. Uh. What? What? What should I do? Um. Uh. Would Would it Would it make sense for me to have uh like a a, a webbing type thing like a net? Will, will Will you as the DM approve that I have like a net like a fishing net? You know, not nothing huge, but but small. Yes. Like we're we're talking like Tom and Jerry stick fishing net. Yes, um, you brought your okay. from home. I'm going to I'm going <laughs> my jellyfishing net. Um I'm going to attempt to catch one of these swirling uh items. I I'm, I'm I'm aiming for the book. That's what I'm that's what I'm trying to trying to grab. Okay. Um you are going to need to roll a 14 and add your uh dexterity modifier. Uh oh, I got a 19. And plus one on dexterity, so that's 20. Beautiful. Uh, dirty 20, as we call in the industry. Um, <laughs> yeah. You are able to... Which one did you do? The book? Uh, yeah, you you like... Um, you net it, and you bring it down, and, and it's just kind of like moving around. It's like... It's pretty powerful, actually. And just then, um, the other three objects attack you. The first one... Of course. And they all have... Why would I have picked the book? Yeah, they, they have a bash. Well, the first one, and they have no attack modifier. So what's your AC? 17. You'll probably fare pretty well here. A 7, a 16, and a Ooh. 19. The first one of them does <sighs> one of them does hit you. They, it bashes you. I'm going to say it's the, uh, the candle, and it does 4 damage. Okay. And I'm dead. Um, death uh, at, de- yeah. Death at 0 hit points. Uh, t- I mean, technically, death at negative one hit points. I had three uh, left over. I had a max of five, 
um, had got took two damage with uh, the folks in the forest, and uh, yeah, so I'm dead. Dude, what I, do you think about that? Asriel didn't make it 37 minutes into this. Uh, <laughs> what was the other character that you had rolled up from? Uh, didn't you have like some sort of bat character or something like that? I did. Um, this is about to get. Give fun. me a second. I will. I will narrate the death of Azriel the Fair. Um, he had high hopes. He had high hopes, and uh, he really thought that a, that a that a man with his experience could best a candle. But he was poorly poorly mistaken. A uh, one that's not even lit, mind you. So this is just. He's just taking a candle to the dome, and uh, with all of the, the the screams of a small child, he screamed like a small child and and besmirched his name and dishonored himself in his very last moments, soiling himself as well. Uh, the the cries echo out into the woods, and a passing wood grew. Uh, hears those cries and goes to investigate because he's always down for a good time. That's right. This cat is Bruce Langstrom. He's a chaotic cat. He loves it. He's got, um, well, he's half man, half bat, essentially. I mean, that's that's kind of his vibe. Um, he's uh, He's got a bow and an axe. Just a, just a chill dude, you know? Ready to party. What, Ready to party. That's what, what is, that's what he's about. What? So Bruce bursts in. He sees this opening in the side of this mound. And he's like, you know what? I'm gonna go investigate yeah. these screams. What is his um? What is his alignment? Like, is he like he, like? He's chaotic. He's but... chaotic, dude. He's crazy. He's insane. He's uh, he's out. He's out for a number one. Okay, so he has no problem looting the corpse of Azrael to take whatever pocket change he had, and uh, you know he's seeing everything flying around, and he's just down for it, dude. Like he's just he's just ready to party. Okay, he's like, this is cool. Like, what's up? What's up? Yeah. Well, well, this is all right. You say. do you. Once, you, by the yeah. time Bruce makes it into this crypt, the objects have went back to their, went back, and he does not witness them flying as he comes down the stairs. Okay. He's he has okay. a torch lit. Um, I would say he immediately sees Azriel's body lying there. What does he do? Uh, well. I, I would I would say this, and, and I know that this dances the line of um, player knowledge versus character knowledge, but I'm going to say that this guy is smart enough to realize that if you see a dead body next to a pillar with a book on it, you probably don't want to touch that book. You know, it's the same thing like when you're walking in Indiana Jones and you see the skeleton on the like one plate. You're like, I'm not walking on that plate because it's going to have a booby trap. So I'm so... Bruce is, is a little bit more uh, street smart. He's not. He's like, I'm. You know what? These are cool. I don't need to touch them. They don't look super valuable. Um, I'm all good here. I like it. You see a, a, a ahead of you, much like Azrael. There's these heavy stone doors, and there is hallways on either side of you. I'm gonna assume okay. you loot the body. You take, you know, his weapons or whatever. Anything else you want, but I mean, there's there's really, uh, you know, I'm probably gonna take. Uh, any family heirlooms um you know i i would say i mean i've got i've got leather armor and a shield i don't think i'm gonna throw any plate mail on um i'm just gonna i'm just gonna say throw caution to the wind and this is how this is how it's gonna be but if i get scared and i'm there's plate armor that i could that i could put on but i'm i'm just i'm, I'm gonna keep i'm gonna keep going like just the way that it is all right which direction do you head but uh, I'm gonna. I'm going to head through the stone door if if I can. I'm gonna check to see if it's uh, unlocked, if you will. It is in fact unlocked. Okay. Um, with great caution, I open the door. And as you do, you hear like a. Is that a is that a long poo on the floor or is that a crevice? It is in fact. Um, if you don't mind, Bruce, move your token into the room, and I will zoom. You got it. All right, so you walk in, t in to see. Um, so you mentioned that uh, that hole in the floor there. Um, it seems to just be like a gaping hole from where you're standing right inside the door there. Um, so you'll have to get closer okay. in order to get more details. But you do immediately notice that there are two floating skeletons 
up in the ceiling, and they appear Dead? they appear to be dancing, <laughs> um, arm in arm, a s- <laughs> slowly waltzing in midair above this fissure on the floor. Okay. Um, they, okay, so they're hovering. Got it. They're hovering. You you notice um, as you're kind of like taken aback by these like floating skeletons. You notice all these stone coffers, which I'm highlighting with the laser pointer here. Um, yeah. And they are lying, you know, close. They're basically coffins. And the uh, the two floating ske- skeletons, they say, Welcome! Welcome! Come! Come and dance with us! Um, okay, alright. Um, you know, I feel like this is uh this is this is definitely a moment where uh bruce is trying to be cordial um and uh and i and i just i just like start you know like doing a little jig i'm not like approaching them yet you know what i mean like i'm just sort of like hey hey, all right what's happening what's good and uh i'm just i'm just kind of i'm just like i'm just i'm I'm doing my thing you know just like oots, oots 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 i'm just hanging out man just do my thing, and and as I'm doing that, I'm like I'm trying to get like closer closer look at these these coffin things. Um, are they standing like straight up or are they laying down? Is it like flat on the ground or is it like straight up? The coffers. Yeah. Yeah, they're laying on the ground. Like this appears to be some sort of crypt. Okay, so essentially for them to, so if they were gonna open, it would be like it slides over the top and then like you know you know come out at you. Okay, that's at, that's at not point, as fun. At this point, you are close enough to the fissure in the floor. There seems it seems to be an undetermined depth at first glance. Um, there's like this weird okay. transparent slime, like dripping from the ceiling, coming down and dripping into that hole. And that same slime s- seems to be coating these skeletons that are dancing in the ceiling. Ugh. Okay. Um. Ha ha. Hey, I'm like you know. Uh, I'm, I'm dancing around I'm like, hey guys, uh, what's a what's a party without snacks? I, I reach into a leather pouch and I pull out an apple and I toss it at one of the dancing skeletons. I'm like, hey man, you want a snack? And I just like toss the apple up like, hey, all in good. We're all good here, right? We're good. <laughs> does it does it hit the skeleton or do you miss? It does not hit the skeleton. You toss it and you're a bad throw. Bruce, it misses the skeleton. Would you like to try again? Do you have more? Does apples? it does it fall down the pit? It does. It falls into the pit. Can I hear anything? Can I can I as it falls into the pit, am I judging its depth in any way? That was the clever ruse. It has no discernible depth. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Um so it's just a big hole. Full of slime, big hole. Um, throw another apple at them? Uh, no, no. I was like, oops, hey, sorry about that, guys. <laughs> Party foul on me. Oh, hey. Um, and they're like, oh, that's fine. And they just keep dancing. <laughs> it's more of a disco now. Uh, so I'm, yeah, dude, we're just, we're, 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 we're rocking out. So I, as I'm, I'm kind of like dancing, uh, and I'm, and I'm just like, you know, like, ooh, ooh, you know, just dancing around these guys and I'm making my way to the door you know but we're still having a good time you know i my my face does not break i am i am in it with these people you know we're just like oh yeah um and then like as i'm like you know kind of close to the door i'm just like hey so uh what's up with that slime guys like it's it's really cool i'm digging it you, can you tell me anything about the slime they completely ignore you one thing um that you do notice as you're like kind of walking past these coffers is you notice that each one has a name on it um, the first one says oh. Lady R. Uh, Amaranda. Okay. Um, the second one says Lord Brigforth. Brandy with the good. Elder brother. Mm-hmm. Brigford the wise. Younger brother. Um, Emmeline the chast. The chaste? C-H-A-S-T. Chast? Like chast? Chastity? Something like that? Something like that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah they, I don't they know. All, they all have <laughs> I don't know. All, they, Clearly, these folks are related, and their names are on their coffers. Cool. Um, as I don't remember any of their names, uh, but my character would. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of dancing around like, hey, uh, do you guys know? Uh, and then I start name dropping all of the names that I read off of the the, the stones. 
again, just trying to like, ah, it's cute. Ah, do you know these people? <laughs> they ignore you. All right. Well, um, party on, uh, Garth. I I, ba I back up to the door and I'm like, you know, ha ha, woo, and I'm checking the handle. Is it unlocked? It is unlocked. Sweet. Uh, I I look back up at my dancing skeleton friends and I'm like, hey, I'm gonna get some more snacks. You guys just keep on keeping on. I'll see you soon. And then I open the door and uh, go into the next room. And I say to myself, they were really nice. We should stay in touch. I'll I'll put them on the Christmas card list. Very nice. Uh, you walk into this next room and there are these pillars. Um, and as you approach them, okay. you notice that they have these carvings, these these scenes of some sort of war, some sort of holy war against men and fairies. You notice um, okay. on either side here, there is like hallways on either side. Right. And you notice right. uh, big double doors up here in the uh, far end of the... Okay. Um, let's see. Can I read anything off of the pillars? Is there any information that I would be able to glean from it? Or I'm just like, oh, snap, there they are. Um, no. It's just, uh, again, just these carvings of, like, you, you recognize that it is the holy war against uh, the fairies. Okay, okay, but nothing, nothing beyond that. Um, well, stone doors have have treated me well, you know, which is which is good. I've had good luck there, uh, but I also I don't would, would my character see those uh, those adorable little puppy dog statues that are tucked over the thing, or is that a uh, is that a player knowledge thing? You do notice there are two statues of hounds. They appear to have chains around their necks, uh, chained to the base of the door. Larger than life, six foot tall. Chained to the base of the door? Yeah, I mean, I, so, that's a little misleading. I think they're just chained to, like, right here. But they are, they're like, okay, they're like okay. iron statues with chains. Okay, alright. Um, well, I'm, I'm gonna... Oh, boy. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna press on, I'm gonna continue into the room... And uh, as I as I'm you know sort of walking through, I'm just checking stuff out. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a peek down this hallway. I'm not gonna like enter it, but I'm gonna like just kind of stand in the in the crux, like on the threshold, and I'm gonna look down. Is there anything that I can see? Fantastic, a corner. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't feel like going back. I don't feel like I, f I feel like reversing. What I'm gonna do is not like you know you don't never go back. Always go forward. Keep moving forward. So we're gonna we're gonna do that. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm just rummaging through my pack, and uh, I'm gonna pull out some iron rations, which are like jerky, right? Like beef jerky. All right. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull out two like relatively decent sizes, you know, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of like hold them up as I'm walking, and I'm just gonna like head towards the door, and I'm just gonna be like, "What's up?" Fido, what's up, Cerberus? How y'all doing? Like, I'm just having a conversation with these statues, right? I'm just like, you know, what's <laughs> right? And uh, hey, you guys look uh, a little stiff. You guys look a little drained. So, uh, you know, here, just and so I throw, I throw some iron, right? You know, one at one and one at the other, in, in, in an offering, if you will. You know, I'm just like, hey, man, like, you guys are doing a great job. You guys are doing a solid job here, right? And I just want to know that I appreciate you. Okay, I know your boss is not going to tell you this, but you are appreciated. Okay, you are loved, and you deserve this special treat. Uh, love you guys. I don't really know your names, but I think I feel good. I feel strong connection to you. Being a Batman, a, a Bat person, uh, I just feel. I feel like we could we could have been friends. <laughs> I go up to the door and check to see if it's unlocked. As you put your hand on the handle the statues immediately animate and and i'm like I'm, and i'm like bro come on man like hey you, uh, these guys a little bit um I, I, we those are those are for you those treats are for you 
I got um, those for you. Um, I would say roll. Uh, let's <laughs> roll for initiative. Uh, roll a d6. Okay. Ooh, I rolled a two. Uh, roll again. I got a okay. four. Rerolling. I also got a four. Okay, reroll again. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. Oh, I got a I'm five. I'm using another dice. I got a five. I got a three. Okay, they immediately attack you. Um, but before they do, are they distracted by the... What What did you throw? Uh, what did you call it? Iron, iron, iron rations. rations. Yeah, my little, my little jerky treats. Little, little, little wholesome jerky treats. I rolled a maybe. I'm going to say one of them is the one on the right here is distracted Love it. and you only get attacked by one. Oh damn though okay. it's not looking good for you it's uh they have a plus three and i rolled a 17 so it's a dirty 20. they do one d8. hit they do uh they they have a bite and they do d they do a d8 of damage he lunges at you in like a bark doing uh, <laughs> only doing two damage Okay, I can, I can, I can tank that. I can tank that. That's good. I got that. Where are your hit points at currently? Um, um uh, he also, uh, uh, he, I, he bites you like right in the stomach. By the way. Oh, jeez. Oh, Fido, no. Um, I have a, uh, my max is six, so now I'm at four, taking okay. the, taking the two. Okay. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm the the whole time this is happening, I'm checking the door. Is the door unlocked behind me? It is locked. Okay. Uh, uh, well, I I'm gonna take my my hand axe and I'm gonna swing it at the dude who's taking a bite out of my stomach, uh, just to get him off of me, get him away from me, so that I might uh, like get out of the situation that I'm in. Uh, go ahead. Uh, roll to hit. You need to hit above a sixteen with your axe. I rolled a 15 plus what's your modifier 14 plus one so 15 uh, okay. hooray you miss are the dogs uh, is the one still uh, eating yes oh I hope so it ah it's good it's good pump the one that good you, pump. The one I call I was gonna say I'm gonna call out to that one and I'm just gonna be like Cerberus, bro, you like them num noms? You like them treatsies? You, you want to help me out, huh? You're good, <laughs> uh, this, the one that's yeah. already uh, uh, engaged with you rolls a thirteen to miss. Roll a six if you're gonna continue to engage. Just so you know, they kind of moved into your uh, like. There, I can't get out. There's only one way out, and that's through that door. So, okay, that's fantastic. Um. So does my does my call for or is that another turn? Like, does my call for assistance? Um, you know, does it work? No, it I'm like, not, hey, it does, not, it does not work. He's just chomping away at those iron rations, but he's uh he's almost done. Fantastic. Um, do I see anything that can that can unlock this door? Like, is there any? Uh, is there? Uh, do, am I feeling like a a, a switch? You notice on the door, um, written in a script writing, it says, Speak, friend, and enter. Bella. <laughs> <laughs> and, as, <laughs> and as you say that, it, uh, you just hear like a... <laughs> and the door is open. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, as, 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 <laughs> as the door is open... Um, I'm I'm like I'm like backing in. I'm like smell you later. <laughs> you know, just just trying to put some distance between me and the the ravenous beasts, the ravenous bug blatter beasts of Troll. As you enter the room, you notice a stone coffer in the center. There's like a light beaming down onto it, and knelt beside it is a semi-transparent kind of ghostly figure he's thin um he's armored plate mail with a helm visor um, raised um he again he's kneeling and he's like sort of uh he doesn't he doesn't immediately notice you but as you sort of like walk in he looks up and he he like he says to you oh good you have come you have come to retrieve my ring and take it to my beloved i look down 
and and kind of like me 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 because realistically i don't i don't know who this cat is right like i didn't bruce didn't have the dream okay so uh i'm i'm like i was like uh okay um yeah yeah i'm here <laughs> what's up what, yeah what's good um so you've come to take my room what, what, to, to return it to my beloved and and set my soul uh, free sure um you know what i mean i think that's good to make sure that you uh get freedom because i believe in that and uh but uh, this was a long journey and uh, a lot of things happened you wouldn't happen to have anything that could help me get out of here number one and number two uh, make the journey worth it anything you can have all the riches you want and the exits you seek just simply take the ring off of my my dead finger inside of this coffer and return it to my beloved all right um uh, is the coffer closed yeah man i got sounds good you want to do me a, a huge solid you want to open that thing for me i can you want to open it for me i cannot you you must open it all right you do you, you, did you put some snakes in this peanut brittle did you, uh, do you is there you shall not is it gonna be, get me you shall not be harmed okay i've been fooled before um so i approached the coffer reluctantly uh crouched at the starting line engines pumping and thumping with time and i i push the the green light flashes i push the coffer lid off um yearning and burning i reach for the ring uh, being a wood guru you're rather small but you feel like this intense strength as you you lift the lid with relative ease and you see inside of the stone coffer um a likeness it's of pretty certain... strong for a wood guru yeah um i got like 14 plus one so i'm like i mean i'm i'm like you know i'm the thick one of the group there there is a skeleton of a knight inside upon its wrist a pair of copper bracelets engraved with owls their eyes are um kind of piercing as they, they look back at you and upon its finger is a bronze band set with a moonstone with fittings in the form of woven branches. That's cool. Um, I remove them and place them on myself in the appropriate areas, you know, wrists and things like that. Um, because I'm a fancy boy now, and I'm excited to do this guy a solid. Um, I also remove the ring. The Each bracelet is worth a thousand gold pieces, so that answers your treasure Sick. question. And as you pull the ring off, Sir Chide's ghost disappears. And a lady, you hear like that music from Sona, like yeah, like the fairy fountain. Thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Comes down from the ceiling, and it is the fair maiden that um, Azrael has been seeing in his dreams. But Bruce doesn't know that. He just knows that it's a pretty lady, and she says in a very yeah. uh, rather Princess Zelda voice, she says, "Thank you for getting the ring of my beloved." Please return it to me, please. And she holds out her hands. Um, taken aback by her beauty, I ask, "Will you show me on my map?" Because <laughs> that's such a video game trope. Will you mark it on my map? <laughs> yes. She marks your map. That's great. That's great. Um, uh, of course, of course, my lady. I will. I will hasten. My journey to you, um, I, I, all I want to do is con reconnect you with your, uh, with your possession and uh, your love. So, um, uh, you got it, girl. I got you. And um, before I leave, I'm gonna, I'm like, I'm like looking around. I'm checking out, you know, what other, if there's any other stuff lying around that I might need. Oh, did you give her? The, did you give her the ring. ring? Did you give her the ring back? Oh, yeah. Oh, I thought. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, of course. Like if I if okay. if I can give it to her, I thought yeah. I had to go somewhere else and give it to her. No. But yeah, no. Like I I I I hand her the ring, uh, head bowed. You know, just very trying to be noble, but I'm not really doing a good job. Well, into in, into your um, in your defense, in Bruce's dream, she did say that he needed to come into her realm, but because of this. 
the uh, the story was somehow altered due to time constraints of this recording. So <laughs> as you give the ring to the, the lady, she turns evil and slits your throat and you die a terrible death in Sir Chide's crypt and no one will ever find your body. Your family will search for you and search for you and they will come up short and they'll never know that you were murdered because you decided to follow screams down into a weird crypt and for some reason kept moving forward just kidding but that well, does go through your mind I will, I will. you get all the treasures yeah and, yeah um she's reunited with sir chide and their love endures forever you live to fight another day uh bruce the wood grew and and i i live to fight another day with a higher level because um it was only 2000 for my next experience and based on gold and whatever b the bracelets i'm i'm there so that's cool um leveled up which is good i was dude i was about ready to just be like um actually i just leveled up so